Welcome to Fridays with Coco. Through the ecumenical prayer cycle, this week we will be praying for people who live in Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, right around here in this part of Coco's beach ball globe. Let's begin with whatever is on the back of this amazing picture. It is a reading of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of Jesus, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the Jesus way, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he was going along, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul asked, Who are you? The reply came, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Those who were traveling with Saul stood speechless because they also heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand. For three days, Saul was without sight. There was a Christ believer in Damascus named Ananias. Jesus said to him in a vision, Get up. Go to the house of Judas and look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man by your name coming in and laying his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Ananias answered, Jesus, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. But Jesus said, Go. For I have chosen Saul to be an instrument for bringing my name before Gentiles, kings, and the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and his sight was restored. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. Go ahead. We, we have heard, and we will tell the story. I think Coco's been seeing some bright lights, too, or else she wouldn't have her shades on. Anyway, the title of Coco's poem is, It's a Miracle! Humans have a fairly narrow comfort zone when it comes to being cold or hot. Above 70, dressing light is just right, but a little below, and a sweater will be sought. Those of the animal kingdom, from insects to great furry creatures, you must agree, deal more easily with this because that's just how they were created or have come to be. So let me ask your opinion about which you think is hotter, lightning or the sun. And if you already know the answer, please keep quiet until this poem is done. If you guessed correctly that lightning is hotter, then let's up the level of this quiz and find out if your education has provided you with information that makes you a whiz. The surface of the sun registers over 10,000 degrees at the very least, whereas lightning is more than three times that amount when its energy is released. Perhaps it now makes much more sense that lightning can cause a major explosion as well as vaporize moisture, split a tree in half, and even cause soil erosion. Let's go back to what I told you about 
that high temperature of this streak of fire so that I may make a clarification that will avoid you accusing me of being a liar. Lightning is made up completely of electrical energy and thus it is not hot or cold, which means we really measure the air around it that heats up almost a million fold. Here are a few fun facts. Lightning can be up to 90 miles long, but only an inch wide. Florida is the lightning capital of the US, but of the world is the Venezuelan countryside. Those who love to make new words may have already been lost in etymological wonder, for thunder and lightning are inseparable. Let's consider the new words thightening or lunder. In 1971, Edwin Robinson lost his vision when struck by this great electrical light, but nine years later was struck again, knocked unconscious, and woke up with his sight. Now I ask you, which is the greater miracle, regaining sight or being struck twice? I'm guessing Edwin didn't care, simply because the end result was so incredibly nice. Okay, I think we're off and running. <coughs> we have all this information about lightning. We have this wonderful story about Saul, someone most of us know more familiarly as Paul. And there's a picture of a tiger with someone grabbing one of the tiger's toes. Well, anyway, today is the fifth and final in a series of five videos in which we're talking a little bit about the alphabet. Last week, we talked about insects whose names begin with the letters P through T. Today, we conclude our alphabetical journey. Let's go to the BTW basket of U through Z instruments where Coco's guests will enlighten us about some musical instruments and share some thoughts on these words of Jesus as found in the Acts reading. They are, I have chosen Saul to be an instrument for bringing my name before Gentiles, kings, and the people of Israel. We begin with, by the way, number one. My name is Lailani. I live near New York City, but my ancestors all lived in Hawaii. Did you know that the ukulele is of Portuguese descent? That's right. It's an adaptation of a small guitar found in Portugal that made its way with immigrants to Hawaii in the 1880s. I love that Coco has asked each of us to respond to a particular part of the Acts reading. And I really love the use of the word instrument. In this case, the instrument was Saul, who we now know as Paul who had been a persecutor of Christ believers. We read how Saul was almost stunned by being chosen because of all the horrible things he had done. But what an amazing example of not just forgiveness, but of how Jesus often paid such wonderful attention to those who considered themselves to be unworthy sinners, or that the world had maybe dismissed or were considered beyond saving. Surely, no one would do that today. Doesn't that sound like a little bit of sarcasm? You decide. So much for the ukulele. By the way, mm -hmm. number two, my name is Odvik. I'm also from the New York City area, and I met Lailani on the plane yesterday as we made our way south to Coco's house in Florida. My ancestors came from India, 
and I inherited an instrument from my great-great-grandparents called the vena. It looks like it's made from wood, but only the part that holds the strings tight. The more pear-like parts are dried gourds, which means that each instrument has a tone all its own because no two gourds would be exactly alike. The player uses the pinky to continuously pluck three of the strings to provide a droning sound while using the other four fingers for playing melodies. Enough of that. I guess we're all using the name Saul today instead of Paul, but it always sounds a little odd to me given that we refer to Paul or St. Paul so much in the Bible. If I may, I'd like to share a little about how I believe God has a plan for each of us that begins at least by the time we're born. Sometimes we hear about things like conversions, thinking it happened all of a sudden or out of the blue. But I believe these are things that God knew and planned for us from the beginning. In the case of Saul, we talk a lot about how he had a conversion experience and then established a life focus on telling all people about Jesus. But if we do a little digging, we find that when he was persecuting people in Jerusalem, causing many to flee, he was actually helping to spread these people out. So the telling of the Jesus story went even further. Who knew? Well, I guess God knew. That's a great BTW number two. Or it may just be that I had a little too much coffee this morning. I don't know. Anyway. By the way, number three. My name is Ellie May. I have an instrument known as the whamola, which is used mostly for jazz. It's a more permanent form of a wash tub bass often associated with bluegrass music. It has just one long string that is manipulated by a pulley and lever system. It gets its name whamola because one uses a drumstick to hit or wham the string. It may sound a little funny, but I'm one of those people who sometimes has to be hit over the head a bit before I realize something that was right in front of me all along. Do you remember how Saul was traveling and all of a sudden a brilliant light caused him to lose his sight? In Coco's poem, she shared about someone who was struck by lightning, lost his sight, was struck again nine years later, and his sight was restored. It may be a bit of a stretch, but Paul was blinded by a bright light, and then his sight was restored by another bright light. Jesus, the one we believe to be the light of the world. And it just fascinates me that those who were with Saul also saw the bright light, but didn't lose their sight. In other words, Jesus not only told Saul that he had been chosen to be an instrument for telling the story, but Jesus somehow made it so those who were witnessing the dramatic scene would continue to see, to not miss, that Saul had been singled out. There's a lot to unpack in that reading, isn't there? 
And here we are at that amazing place, hmm, spider, called, by the way, number four. How could we be there already? And yet we are. By the way, number four, my name is Wesley. The xylophone is an instrument with a somewhat unknown origin, at least compared to the modern ones. It could be thousands of years old and maybe from Asia, but the ones we know today relate mostly to those made in Africa over the past seven to eight hundred years. Regardless, it says, says something about how people have always loved music and look around wherever they live to find materials that can be used to make instruments. On to Saul. What a cool story. It's like a movie that's already been written. I can hear it now. Saul, the musical on Broadway. But wait, not so fast. With all the things Jesus could command so easily, he goes through this elaborate process of commanding someone else Ananias to be the one to lay his hands on Saul's eyes so that his sight will be restored. Let's face it, Jesus could have done that himself. There's a lot to unpack in this passage, but it's clear to me that Jesus chose someone else to do the work of ministry, making it clear to us that we are to do the same, not just wait around for Jesus to do it all. The power comes from God, but we are the ministers. That's true. It's almost like we have more than five over here for some reason. I just noticed that. Well, like I say, I'm one of those who are has to be hit over the head a little bit sometimes just to see what's right in front of me. Go ahead, Wes. By the way, number five. Okay. I see number six. Anyway, go on. My name is Barak, which is derived from a Hebrew word meaning lightning. Anyway, my ancestors came from China where an instrument called the yang gum has been around for centuries. It's a little like the dulcimer in the United States because it's usually played with hammers. And even though one strikes the instrument, it has a rather delicate sound. Let's get to Saul. I'd like to piggyback on what Wesley was just talking about. That stuff about how Jesus chose someone to go and do something he could have done himself. Instead, he chose Ananias, a name we hear in the book of Acts, but not always referring to the same person. There were three of them. The first was the famous Ananias, who had a reputation as a liar. There was the second Ananias we met today, and the third was a high priest in Jerusalem. Bottom line, Ananias was a common name. Today's Ananias was somewhat random. Someone Saul would not have known and this is what I really love about this reading. We are called into ministry and to tell the story of Jesus to anyone. We may never know how much our story makes a difference in the life of someone else. So I say, let's keep our mouths open and let's keep playing instruments too. Well, there you have it, U, V, W, X, Y, 
and, well, I guess you could say, finally, I get to be one of Coco's BTW guests, but only because she stuck with having five guests per week and trying to cover an alphabet of 26 letters means that there would be one left over. I don't mind because I get to talk about an instrument called the zither. My family had a zither in its Vermont homestead. I never knew who really played it and I never tried to play it either. Coco taught us in her poem a lot about lightning, which happens to be symbolized by the letter Z. And Edwin Robinson, that person who was struck twice, the first time taking his sight away and the second time bringing it back. I think it's amazing enough he lived through one strike considering what Coco taught us about the extreme power of lightning and the way it heats up the immediate area. All this makes me think about the word random. It seems so random that someone could be struck twice. This randomness is something Coco was intentional about in deciding that today's alphabetical journey would include musical instruments because we think of the orchestra and bands as having specific instruments, not random instruments. But the great symphony of life in which we are to all be in concert with one another, in other words, play nicely together, is a great message for our world today. The traditional Western symphonic orchestra has relatively few instruments, only augmented by some of the ones mentioned today. That is, if a composer is looking for a special effect or to give the overall sound of a different character for the orchestra itself. I like to think that all of us as people who are so unique from one another form some kind of orchestra with its own unique character because of who each of us is. By the way, number six, <clears throat> I think the word instrument is really cool because its meaning has to do with being a tool. An instrument by itself is somewhat useless unless someone picks it up and learns how to use it. For many, the word instrument immediately brings to mind musical instruments. But there are many others. A scalpel is a surgical instrument. A speedometer is a measuring instrument. And let's not forget the Bible, something that, like an instrument, is not all that much unless someone picks it up to learn from it. Jesus chose Saul, not as the instrument, but it says specifically in the reading, an instrument, which means Jesus chooses each one of us to be instruments. And this brings us back to the word random. For I don't believe for a second that Jesus plays some kind of eeny, meeny, miny, mo or catch a tiger by the toe game. Jesus doesn't play games with us. We won't be randomly selected the way lightning might randomly select a human being. So for today, let's just say, as St. Francis prayed, God, make me be an instrument of your peace. We have a very different kind of piece of music for you today for a time of meditation. 
It was written by Franz Schubert, and it is entitled Liermann, which means the hurdy-gurdy player. And the hurdy-gurdy is an instrument that has uh, one or more strings, but there's a spinning wheel that acts kind of like the bow does on a violin. And it has a really interesting sound because one of the strings that sounds continuously is a drone sound. And we're all familiar with bagpipes and how there's a drone sound. And we heard about one of the instruments today with the pinky that would be continuously plucking three of the strings to give a droned sound. Maybe sometime we'll talk about drone sounds and how that relates to us as people in God's world. So you're going to hear a little drone down in the left hand, and then you're going to hear my right hand kind of in this part of the keyboard playing some other little notes that the hurdy-gurdy might play. And then in the middle, I'll have to kind of share hands a little bit to play some middle notes. It would be the actual melody of this song that has words about the lyreman or the hurdy-gurdy player. All right. So, Senorita Juanita, keep an eye on things. I'll try not to squeeze you too tightly. Close your eyes. Fold your paws. Okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. Thank you for the words from Acts that help us understand that you really do call upon each one of us to be your ministers as instruments of peace. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends as Jesus calls us friends. And we especially lift up those who live in Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, who you know each by name. We also lift up the people of Ukraine and the complicated ways that all of us are affected by the strife and war on that soil. As we continue to live during this time of pandemic, we lift up all with any health issues, 
all who are caregivers and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. Thank you for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, fill us with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today. Amen.